Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and this is tips number 622 entitled Making Dividing Head Plates by the Rotary Table Method. And this is uh, part of a series that I'm doing on how to make indexing plates for a dividing head. I guess we could also title this uh, Bolt Circles. But I showed you by the transfer method in the last video, and this time we're going to do also 15 holes only on a larger plate like this. And I'm going to do it on the rotary table on the Bridgeport Mill. So let's go on over there and take a look at how I'm going to do it. Now first of all, let me point out that I did turn this one down to uh, just to clean it up. Matter of fact, I did a couple of them from the original plasma cut. It wasn't totally necessary for this, but I just thought I'd clean it up and the diameter is not uh, necessarily important on this. It happens to be about five and a little less than five and a quarter. And these holes that you see here were uh, drilled to hold it on this homemade arbor when I turned it down. And I have them off center for a reason. I might explain that later on or, or I might not. Well let's go over and set that rotary table up. Okay I'm on the bridge board and I have two different rotary tables here. This one is really too small to use because the table itself is approximately the size of the plate and there's no good way to clamp it, although it could be clamped from the center, I suppose, by some means, but I'm not going to use this. I only laid that on there for the purposes to tell you that in order to use a rotary table for this type of application, you must center the center of the table here perfectly with the center of the spindle, and there are several different ways to do that. And if I was going to use this one, I would probably use either a coaxial indicator or the last word and sweep it around on the inside of the hole, or it could be done on the outside here until it's right on within a thousandth or so. But again, I'm not going to use this. Let me set that aside. So I'm going to use this big Walter made in Germany rotary table which is 25 centimeters in diameter, which is 9 and 3 quarter diameter, not quite 10 inches. But you see there's plenty of room to work with a plate this size and uh, room also for the clamps. But again, the first thing I will do here is to center the center of this with the center of the Bridgeport spindle. And because of all of the T-slots here, it's a little bit difficult, if not impossible, for me to use the coaxial indicator and try to sweep it on the outside here because I have to get a little bit below the T-slots and it just didn't work out for me. So I'm going to use a different method of uh, centering that. I do not have access to the center hole for reasons I don't really want to talk about so I can't use the last word indicator in there either. So let me show you another method which I have shown in other videos so I want to run through it real quickly. Using a wiggler or some other sharp point, and it doesn't have to be a wiggler, but like that, I will find the approximate center. And you can get it fairly close by that method. And after I have done that, and I won't zero in on that, show you too much on that, then I'm going to use an indicator on the spindle. So I have a small indicator, plunger type here, you could use different kinds, and it's magnetic and it's attached onto the table. And I'm going to sweep it around the quill, I think I said spindle before, but around the quill, or it could be around the uh, spindle or the quill nose right here, it doesn't really matter. It's important, however, that your machine be in tram or you'll get uh, bad settings. And then all I'm going to do here and I'm within 5,000, so I already checked it by, by using the wiggler. I'm just going to sweep it around. And, and you know what? I'm not going to show that, other than what I'm showing you right here, until I get it right dead on. And then I will zero out the digital readout for the balance of this project. 
Perhaps you can see I'm on zero and I'll just turn the rotary table around and I'm using it uh, without the crank and I'll have the same reading over on uh, this side and on the front here I'm a couple thousandths off there so I have to uh, readjust that and then I will zero out the digital readout and lock the table in both axes zero it out and yes you are right these setups take an awful long time a lot longer than what the actual drilling process will take but I've got little clamps here and the work is sitting on some parallels they're just uh, tool bits really but they're hardened so I need to keep them out of the way so we don't drill into them we uh, I mean myself and uh, these can be tightened down I got spacers here on the outside now I need to center the plate on to the center <laughs> of the table so how am I going to do that well we could go back to using an indicator but that's kind of a pain in the neck because this has to be slid around to center it so I turn this on the lathe it's just out of aluminum it's three quarters on this end and it's one and one eighth where my thumb is tapping so that it will fit into the plate now I'll put this in a three quarter collet and get right back to you you know what, I'm fully aware that I occasionally misspeak and I use the wrong word or the wrong term. I try to correct that, but I, I miss some of them, so you just have to bear with me. But a lot of us do that in regular conversation as well. Okay, with this arbor, temporary arbor, I've got that centered up. And now the clamps are in place. I want to back them off a little bit like that because I don't really need to clamp this very hard. It's not going anywhere. All the pressure is down. And I'll take the double-ended Arkansas socket wrench and tighten the clamps. And it's ready to go. Now this rotary table can be turned by hand. Now there's a graduations here, 360 degrees, or it can be done with the crank. I'm going to use the crank because uh, I can get it within minutes. There, there's a scale on here for minutes and we got degrees out here so I, I can get it pretty accurate. More accurate than if I just use the pointer over here on the protractor and I should zoom in on that for you. And now this temporary arbor can be taken out and a chuck installed. And looking down here at the index mark or the pointer, you can see that I can bring that right around to zero degrees. And I put a little mark on that. It's not quite on that. I'll bring it up. And we have to avoid backlash, always turning in the same direction and never going past our mark. Or I have to back it up to remove the backlash. Let me go over just a little bit of the math. So I'm making another plate with 15 holes. And the reason for that is I'm going to use that plate in a future video. That's where I came up with the 15. Now... Doing the math, if we divide uh, 360 degrees in a circle by 15, we're getting uh, 24 degrees. So it's 24 degrees between holes, angularly, if you will. So I just did this real quickly with a, a calculator that uh, hole number one will be at a zero, two will be at 24, 48, and right on down the line until I make a full circle of 360 degrees and you see that hole number 15 is at 336 degrees and if there was a 16th hole it would be back to zero so th that's how I'm doing it it's that simple and it, it's real easy here because there this is even number this is 24 degrees there's no half degrees or, or minutes or seconds or anything like that so it's going to be relatively easy to do back to the mill 
Now you can see that the crank here can be engaged or disengaged and in German there's an A and an E. I had to look that up. The A stands for Aus, which is off, and the E is Ein, which is on. I know my German's terrible. My mother spoke German and the only word I ever learned was Gesundheit. So, Ein, I engage the gear and now I can crank it and I'll bring it around to zero over here on the pointer and zero here on the collar and this can be loosened up and brought around same as a lathe collar and then there are two locks one here and one over on the other side that lock the table however I'm just doing drilling so I'm not sure it's necessary for me to lock it I want eighth inch holes so what I could do is use a little starter drill like this and then uh, drill with that and then go change tools and go in with an eighth but that's just too much work if I use this size center drill the pilot on this is eighth inch so maybe that won't go quite all the way through but I can go back and redrill those on the drill press real quickly if it doesn't quite have the length that I need so anyway I'll put this into the drill chuck right now this whole circle can really be any place it wants to be on the on the plate and I'm arbitrarily going to put it one and a half inches from the center so I will move the table of the milling machine one and a half inches looking at the digital readout in the x-axis like this and there I go and I'm making sure that there is clearance right here so I don't hit the chuck and that the drill doesn't hit the uh, parallel here should I go all the way through but I don't think I'll be going all the way through it is so easy to make a mistake when you're indexing a rotary table so what I'm going to do is mark temporarily here on the protractor that goes all the way around and I didn't happen to have any white marker so I had to abscond with my daughter <laughs> my uh, granddaughter's uh, silver nail polish and I'm just going to put a little dot and acetone I think takes that off doesn't it so starting at 0 and then at 24 and 48 and so on all the way around and of course I'll be doing that off camera okay that was quite a lengthy setup but I'm finally ready to make some chips That's it, 15 holes. Let's see if the if hole one lines up when I go back to zero. And it does. Success. And the grandkids have arrived. 
with a lot of noise in case you haven't noticed. On this index plate I'm really only making one set of whole circles. If I wanted more, for instance like this, I'd have to determine the spacing and simply move the milling machine table to the next diameter, whatever that would be, and it may be necessary to remove the clamps or replace them or something of that nature. All right, let's take it off. Now drilling those holes, if I wasn't stopping to explain it and move the camera and things like that, would only take a matter of minutes, but the <laughs> setup took, what, a full hour or more, I don't know. I didn't really time it. But there it is in all its glory. Now again the holes just barely pecked through as you can see because the pilot on the center drill wasn't quite uh, long enough. I would have ended up countersinking. So over to the drill press I go with an eighth inch bit to just finish them off. That'll just take a minute. And they can't move on me now because they are established. Wow, what a perfect application for my float lock vise. Okay, three more holes to drill and countersink and we're done. Okay, the holes are drilled and countersunk on one side, ready to assemble. Okay, it's ready to use and that 15 plate is what I'm going to use in a future video when I do some dividing on the lathe uh, in regards to that teaching aid. Hope you enjoyed this video on the rotary table. Be sure and watch the next episode where I will make one for the hardinge or, well it might be for this, I'm not sure yet, and uh, that'll be done on the hardinge dividing head. So. Tune in for that when available. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe. At least consider subscribing. Of all the projects that I have done in the year 2019 and videos I've made, by far the most difficult project has been putting in a new battery in my iPhone. Don't try this at home.